Hi, I'm Steve Carlson. I'm the 2016 candidate for United States President for the Minnesota Independence Party, and my goal in this litigation is to challenge political corruption of the Democrats and Republicans in Minnesota and get on that 2016 primary ballot for the IP. But Lori Gildea, a Republican who is Chief Justice of the Minnesota Supreme Court, uh, because she was appointed to that spot by Republican Governor Tim Pawlenty, has teamed up with Al Franken to destroy the IP as a major political party and keep me off the ballot. So I would have to collect tens of thousands of signatures just to get on the ballot, like a libertarian or something. I am challenging the latest partisan ploy by Gildea, who has come completely off the wall, purporting to dismiss my contest with Al Franken, which I timely filed December 2nd, 2014, just seven days after the state canvassing board determined he got the highest number of votes legally cast in an invalid election. That kind of begs the question, can you cast legal votes in an invalid election? Of course you can. So here is a verified affidavit in support of my motion to reverse this dastardly action, if you will, by the partisan Chief Justice. By the way, she will be up for re-election. The information I am giving to the Supreme Court explains why I am running for president and why the IP needs to be put back on the ballot in 2016. It supports my petition. It supports my contest, my appeal of a contest. Uh, I also have a petition pending, but that's pre-briefing, and this is with respect to her attempt to dismiss the contest. Uh, but this is actually within that contest called a petition for rehearing and a motion to correct clerical errors. State of Minnesota in Supreme Court, A14-2201, appeal from court file number 62-CV-14-7915, in the matter of the contest of the general election held November 4th, 2014, for the purpose of electing a United States Senator from the state of Minnesota. Affidavit of Appellant Steve Carlson. Now, on March 27th, 2015, or soon thereafter, the three-judge panel, headed by Judge Vandenorth, John Vandenorth, composed by the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, Lori Gildea, who has made this objectionable April 30th, 2015 order dismissing the appeal of that panel's order, mailed their notice by U.S. Mail to me of entry of an order on my post-judgment motions there and their decision denying the motion to me. When I received it, I studied it, and I determined to file an appeal within 10 days of the decision, even though it did not decide the contest and therefore did not require the expedited appeal. However, because I generally do not trust judges or politicians or lawyers, I did file my appeal from it under Minnesota Statute 209.10 Subdivision 4. That's the expedited uh, standard for filing with the understanding that all the civil rules, trial and appellate and general practice, also apply where not in conflict with the Comprehensive Congressional Elections Code, of which Chapter 209 is just one part. My contest regards a congressional election, while this 10-day statute regards state legislative races. As such, I believe and believe that my appeal would in any case be timely under the civil rules which allow a 60-day time for taking appeal from the panel's orders. I believed, as this court has found in Sorka v. Commissioner of Revenue, 2013, that Minnesota Statutes 209.10 Subdivision 4 does not stand alone, but is supplemented by all the civil rules in this case for reasons I argue in my attached motion and petition. It is my belief that this Minnesota Supreme Court is impermissibly deciding and judging an election contest in which Chief Justice Gildea helped Al Franken to win in an invalid election and now impermissibly shields him from contest by a fiat. The nominee of the Minnesota Independence Party through winning a statewide primary. And this court and Franken and Mike McFadden of Gildea's party have actively sought to nullify that primary election uh, victory. 
Further, she and other justices now seek to shield this duopolistic, the two big parties, Democrats and Republicans, this duopolistic ploy from any judicial review. Ever since 2012, when DFL Secretary of State Mark Ritchie intervened in my race with Betty McCollum for the U.S. House of Representatives to keep me from using voter emails from the Secretary of State's office, as Mark Ritchie used them for his campaign, even though for years, quote-unquote, his office had been making those voter emails, uh, uh, email addresses available to all candidates, just not me. I based this in part on direct statements from Nancy Bream, who still works in the OSS, the Office of Secretary of State, to the best of my knowledge. I believe now that Chief Justice Gildea is pleased and is not neutral or following the U.S. Constitution and the CCEC prescribed pursuant to Article 1, Section 4 of the U.S. Constitution. Pleased that the Independence Party has been eliminated as a major political party, so her GOP she was originally appointed by Governor Tim Pawlenty, not elected, as required by the Minnesota Constitution, and the DFL can hold meaningless federal debates and elections and possibly someday be important in our U.S. Congress and never be challenged meaningfully by any competing associations of independent voters from that pesky Minnesota. For reasons set out in the attached petition and motion, I believe that this dismissal order is nothing but a ploy a shield that is baseless in law and certainly stands as an error and abuse of power. I have carefully reviewed Soika Supra and find the April 20th and 30th, 2015 orders mere pretext and impermissible judging and deciding by the Minnesota courts, and I argue this must be reversed. I believe the grounds set out in the election contest filed December 2nd, 2014 are absolutely good grounds requiring the invalidation of the election of Al Franken. In addition, because of the Minnesota court's mishandling of this contest in which they seek to block Minnesota law from being carried out, Al Franken went up to the U.S. Senate and Mark Dayton had forwarded to the U.S. Senate Secretary a falsified election certificate because he claimed, citing Minnesota Statutes 204C.40, that there was no pending Minnesota Statutes 209.12 election contest remaining to be finally judicially determined by a court of proper jurisdiction in Minnesota under Chapter 209. And further, that issuing this on December 19, 2014, which I believe Chief Justice Gildea improperly left out of her April 20, 2015 order, this issuance by Dayton and Ritchie was illegal and that the panel acted in contravention to the United States Constitution in a federal election, abusing their power and making Minnesota a show democracy, similar to the government of Fidel Castro in this and all federal elections in Minnesota, including for president. And further, that this court has been made part of a show democracy and a show court. And these submissions are a good faith litigation by a non-lawyer but a politically concerned American citizen to create a real record and to vindicate my civil rights and the democratic rights of all Minnesota voters, especially that large number of independent voters, candidates, and parties whose political preferences lie outside all your national political parties. I would prefer to leave these matters to others and shirk my duty and live my life according to my own lights without the bother and sacrifice of self-governance. However, I cannot, because I believe this nation is drifting impermissibly and dangerously. It is permissible, but it's dangerous. I believe the nation is drifting dangerously. I'm motivated by deep concerns about national security, the economy, the destruction of social and religious and civil rights, and most of all, by senseless, out-of-control elections. I think I have found a great part of the problem here in this court and in the Ramsey County District Court in 2012. I did not go looking for this court and believed people here would follow the law and respect our Constitution. I knew absolutely nothing about election law, nothing, until the political intervention of Mark Ritchie. I believe Mark Ritchie is the most partisan Secretary of State possible 
based on what I have learned, including his use of voter emails, email ad addresses, that he took home from his civic education program at the Office of Secretary of State in 2007 to fund and promote his own Secretary of State campaign, believe it or not, and for other DFL candidates, including for president, something I knew nothing of until I heard about it on TPT Almanac much later. Receiving notices and documents from the panel is <clears throat> and was the manner of service, and that should be by U.S. mail, is and was the manner of service and notice that I have selected under the proceedings at the panel, so that I could be sure to get a copy of each document mailed by that court with the extra cushion of three days that is taken up by clerical, postal, and other exigencies. The same, with a single exception, has been my manner with the Minnesota Supreme Court in all my proceedings there or here. Another exigency I must accommodate in my pro se litigation is that because of financial pressures, I do not have access to the internet, except through the libraries and coffee shops. I do not have access at home. And on January 7, 2015, we lost our home, due in large part to human rights violations inflicted by the state, including this court. In Carlson v. Emdeed uh, at 1380 U.S. State, uh, United States Supreme Court, 2013, it was a United States Supreme Court case, that court found that Minnesota has been denying due process to applicants to the Emergency Unemployment Compensation Federal Program by hiding behind any kind of state processes in order to prevent federal review of that program or all federal programs, and this was done throughout the states of the Eighth Circuit, and this court knew that. This is but one example of the politically motivated human rights violations by the state of Minnesota and its political parties that dominate the Minnesota Supreme Court, which have penalized me when and because I ran for federal office, displeasing these powerful partisan interests. Testimony about this is on the record of the panel, because it is relevant to the invalidity of the undemocratic and unconstitutional practices used by both major national party affiliates, the DFL and Chief Justice Gildea's party, the Minnesota GOP, to eliminate the Minnesota Independence Party in 2014 as a Minnesota major political party. The single exception to my arranging to get notice from the court by mail has been when I filed an expedited motion in October 2014 as part of an elections petition to try to get review of the decision by Gildea's party and the DFL, Franken and McCollum's party to exclude my party and Jesse Ventura's party, inter alia, the Independence Party nominee for U.S. Senate, which I am for 2014, from an upcoming CBS WCCO public broadcast debate held on Sunday, uh, October 26th. Um, and so, uh, and the expedited motion was filed just days before. I contacted the appeals clerk to find out how I would know the court's decision. And she said, if I told her my email address, I would be emailed as soon as any decision was made. No decision was ever made. As Chief Justice Gildea did absolutely nothing. She, prefer, she believes that this is not her responsibility, but the FCC is alone, and they did not want to do anything according to their decision in the complaint I filed there according to the required rules under the Communications Act equal time requirement. Then the day after the debate, Chief Justice Gildea declared the entire petition would be dismissed. This was sent by email, but again, I was looking for it. I have over 100,000 unread emails in my Yahoo.com account, and I do not have access to the internet unless I go to a library which has limited hours or a coffee shop where I have to pay for drinks. In a phone conversation May 5, 2015, the clerk's office told me that because they had the email address from that expedited motion, they decided to send Gildea's April 20, 2015 order to that email address. I did not see it. But I was at the library on April 30, 2015, <clears throat> because the day before, I had filed my appellate principal brief at the U.S. Court of Appeals 
for the Eighth Circuit in my case, remanded back by the U.S. Supreme Court to the Eighth Circuit, and by them uh, back to Judge Erickson, Nan, uh, Joan Erickson, at the U.S. District Court, District of Minnesota. The case number is 15-1603, Eighth Circuit, if I'm not mistaken. Because of a technology problem, I had to file on April 29th without being able to create tables of contents and authorities. So I went to the library April 30th and used their computer to create the tables on Microsoft Word. And then the circuit court contacted me by phone and I sent an email requested by their office with a corrected word count, 11,800 words. And at that moment, the dismissal popped up in my email. Because in my practice, I have found with federal cases that if you open the link, you lose access after that to the document. And I did not have a storage device prepared and was working on the federal case for many days. And since it was dismissed and required no immediate action from me, I did not open the order or look any further at the time. I do not have access to the internet except at the library and coffee shops. I have also begun to use a phone internet but I can't look at attachments and generally don't use my phone to try to get emails on Yahoo. For these reasons, I have, according to my rights, arranged service and notice under terms that I be sent or served the notices and judgments and all other documents, including orders by U.S. mail. In taking appeal, I indicated it was filed pursuant to 209.10 subdivision 4. Even though the decision I appealed from did not decide the contest, because it simply declined to void its previous proceedings, which also did not decide the contest. The contest has never been decided by any Minnesota court. Franken and Ritchie and Dayton simply violated the law and illegally issued an election certificate. I cited 209.10 subdivision 4 and filed within 10 days in order to be safe from the time-consuming timeliness arguments and the dismissal of any kind although I don't believe this court has the power under the U.S. Constitution, Article 1, Section 4, to dismiss or block this or any congressional election contest. I actually believed at the time, and believe now, that with the applicability of all the civil rules on this issue, that the 60-day limit for filing appeal from the post-judgment motions was the applicable standard. There is no provision for service and filing of appeals from a decision of the contest in Minnesota Statutes 209. Point subdivision 4, which applies to legislative contests, state legislative contests, as opposed to congressional contests in 209.12, uh, which has its own provision separate from 209.10 state legislative office. As such, the rules of civil procedure apply where not inconsistent or in conflict. Further, subdivision 6 of 209.10 makes clear that, quote, this chapter does not limit the constitutional power of the House of Representatives and the Senate to judge the election returns and eligibility of their own members, unquote. As I have been arguing, Franken, himself a judge in his own election contest, this court and the panel and the Ramsey County Court in 2012 have, in fact, limited and interfered with the power of the Senate and the U.S. House of Representatives to do just that. And this is a shameless usurpation of the power of the people and also of their legislative bodies. It is a violation of due process and of the right to vote. The state legislative office provision, to the extent it is applicable to congressional office election contests, does not provide any detail at all about time or manner of filing or time or manner of service, and indeed does not mention filing or service at all. As such, <clears throat> the rules of civil and appellate procedure and general practice supplement and are in aid of and not inconsistent or in conflict with this 209.10 subdivision 4, whose citation has purportedly triggered this dismissal of any review by this court of the shenanigans down at your panel. Specifically, rules of civil procedure 5, 6, 54, 59, 60, and 62 not exclusive, Various general rules and appellate rules apply and govern the filing of this appeal, including but not limited to 103, 104, 108, 109, 125, and 126. Franken has already used Rule 12 to dismiss this election contest. The panel has already used 
Rule 54 to create the circumstances in which Franken, Ritchie, and Dayton could violate the Constitution and Minnesota laws and pretend that court supported their illegalities and corruption at the court. Now, because of the anomaly in giving me notice of your requirements, although I personally visited your clerk's office on, I believe, April 20th to inquire regarding the status of the case and told them I'd received nothing in the mail, I never received or had actual notice of uh, the April 20th, 2015 order, and that is why I did not respond to it by April 24th, 2015. It was not mailed to me, but rather erroneously sent to my yahoo.com email address. I never received notice that the case had been filed without the payment of $500. By contrast, the notice of filing for pe the petition I filed April 23rd, 2015 was mailed to me, and I had notice and was able to respond. As referenced above, the exception of a single instance, with the exception of a single instance during October 2014. Specifically, during my attempt to have this court review a petition and motion to enjoin the organizers of two remaining debates for the U.S. Senate campaign organized by Al Franken, the DFL favorite, and Mike McFadden, the Republican, I contacted the clerk of appellate courts and asked when I could look for an order on that motion. Since this court issued no order whatsoever, as the debate passed, with CBS WCCO locking the doors on me and instructing a guard to spot me and forcefully keep me out of the studio as the Independence uh, Party Senate nominee. Then this same Justice Gildea, Gildea, who was appointed by Governor Pawlenty and re-elected as Chief Justice, issued an order misrepresenting Minnesota election law and refusing to carry out the requirements of the court under Minnesota Statutes 204B.44. But with that exception, I always file with this court by U.S. mail and receive notice of your actions by U.S. mail. I have more than 100,000 unread emails in this account and never have asked or agreed to filing a notice by email. Again, with that single exception. In contacting the clerk's office to clear up the situation, I have asked, and the clerk's office has complied uh, with my request that uh, going forward... Uh, that going forward, um, I will get notice by mail. Now, I'm on a, a weird computer, and uh, I'm sorry just to finish up this so that you see what I have asked them. They will now ensure that going forward, I receive notices and documents by mail. But in the case of Chief Justice Gildea's order, I did not see it, and so could not file an informal memorandum. I respond to that order and to the April 30th, 2015 order dismissing the contest and this petition for rehearing and motion to correct clerical error, which this affidavit supports. Further, your affiant saith not, Steve Carlson, petitioner and movement, May 8th, 2015. Uh, I hope that you will find this helpful in understanding just how the duopoly, um, should I say, colludes with the courts uh, to ensure that we can never have free and fair elections. And this is why they must be stopped. We must support independent candidates around this nation. And I wish to continue that fine heritage in Minnesota. Not that everybody that is an independent voter should vote for me for president, but there should be an Independence Party primary for president, and I will seek that nomination against Hillary Clinton or whomever and against the Republicans. I'm Steve Carlson, and I approve this message.